Today, I want to talk to you about personal branding because I see a lot of people believe that personal branding means that you have to sell your soul to the capitalism devil. And the result is that they miss out on a lot of opportunities and the the chance to own their own story and to craft a compelling narrative around how they help people and what they do. So I want to help you think about it a little differently so that you can recognize what incredible things you can do if you understand what it is, or like I said, just think about it just a, a smidge different than you might currently. So let's dive in. Hello and welcome. My name is Jonathan Pritchard. I'm from ICanReadMinds.com. So my whole thing is understanding how people think and then applying that understanding to life and business. And personal branding is a huge, huge part of that whole equation especially here in the 21st century when we all have access to the internet and entire production studios in our pocket called cell phones. And we are all, in a sense, our own media company, our own uh, freelancers, our own CEO of myselfbusiness.com kind of a thing. So personal branding is really, really important if you want to break out and create your own thing. Now, I want to talk about first what it isn't, which is how most people think of personal branding, which is uh, you've got to be completely transparent and share everything and to now commoditize your entire life into something that you're packaging for sale. And uh, years ago, uh, for a personal story of I, I get it, which is years ago, a friend of mine as uh, a performer, entertainer, and he got into live streaming really, really early. This is years ago. And we would be at a conference for other entertainers and stuff, and we'd all be hanging out, having a great time. And then here's this one guy with a cell phone live streaming to his audience. And all of us, even though we're performers, we're not on stage. We're just hanging out with our friends. And now this dude is kind of giving the outside world this view into what should be a just us kind of hang. And it was really weird. And he was very comfortable shining that public eye into private spaces. Now, as a consequence, he got to millions of followers and he's doing just fine. But I get how weird it can be to feel like you need to do that in order to uh, build an audience online or to be a personal brand is to commoditize and, and shine that public eye into private spaces. But for me, personal branding is more experiential design than it is violating your privacy. And to kind of help you, uh, to help explain that, I want to Kind of tell you my journey of that, which is uh, back in 2008, I went on tour as the tour manager for a guy uh, by the name of Brian Brushwood. Awesome, awesome dude. And his look was very, very distinctive, right? He had uh, Liberty spikes and crazy hair. And then this is me uh, dressed like a normal person with a fairly normal haircut. And I'm his tour manager. Well, turns out that when we would load into a venue, and then I need to go out to the car to get something and then come back in, I would be locked out of the venue and I'd bang on the door and then the venue manager would say, yeah, there's no way that you're the tour manager for that guy, right? That guy has Liberty Spikes, crazy hair, uh, distressed t-shirts and jeans, and then you look way too square to be on tour with that guy. So I figured out, all right, if I'm going to tour with him, I need to look like him. And then one night when we were backstage at, uh, I think it was Halloween Horror Nights uh, in Orlando, we were in the trailer and then he gave me a mohawk that I kept for several years uh, after that. So now when we're walking on to the, to, to a, a plane or something like there's the dude with Liberty Spikes, there's the guy with a mohawk. Yeah, they're, they're definitely traveling together. And that look was very distinctive. Now, when I, uh, was on tour with him is when I came up with the stage name, which 
to me, I was thinking, you know, I want to be able to keep my private life private and my public life public. So I would like to have some gap between those two. So we're, how do we come up with a stage name? Is it going to be weird? Are my friends going to be weirded out by this? Are they going to call me my old name or the new name or, or what, what's that all going to be like? Well, eventually we came up with Johnny Zabant, like an idiot Zabant, but with a Z. And that checked a lot of boxes. It was kind of on brand, right? Like an idiot savant, oh, somebody who can do incredible things with your mind. I'm a mentalist. All right. That checks that box. Zabant, let's Google it. Nothing's around. Okay. So that would be an easy thing to rank for. So that was awesome. It kind of loses some points on the, on the, how do you say this scale and how do you spell this scale, but it was worth it in the end. And then Johnny Zabant's kind of like a punk rock character that doesn't really care about a lot. Like, yeah, let's go. So then when I went out on my own doing my own shows, I performed as Johnny Zabant. Now in colleges and universities, that kind of uh, don't care attitude really works well and resonates with the college audience. The challenge though, was that all of my marketing materials with the mohawk and the kind of punk rock energy, well, my show is a lot more kumbaya than punk rock. It's more, look what you can do if you put your mind to it. Look what incredible things you could accomplish if you understood how your mind works. So the look and the vibe of the outward facing materials we're kind of at odds with what I would deliver in person. So the messaging was out of alignment. And that's why branding is the thing that solves all of that. Branding is more about the experiential design through the entire relationship with you and your audience, your clients, your customers, whatever you want to call it. And branding is the thing that helps you choose how to present yourself, how to speak on stage and how you do everything. And another element that I see all the time is that, well, I need to be true to myself. I can't have an affectation. I can't do a stage character. I just need to be me. And that is correct. And I strongly do suggest that you brand yourself as yourself, not some lampoon or caricature of who you are. And at the same time, you're still always managing what parts of yourself you're putting out there, depending on the context, the audience, the situation. And that's why to me, when somebody says I have to be myself, the only person who knows what that is, is you, because you've had decades of experience of knowing who you are. When somebody meets you for the first time, they're only seeing you in this slice of time. So it is impossible to communicate all of who you are and to bring my full self to the situation. It's just a logical impossibility for it to be any other way. So you are already managing your perception or other people's perception of who you are based on how you dress, how you speak, how you hold yourself, all the elements that go into communicating with a person or an audience. So you're already engaged in personal branding and that experiential design. You just haven't done it with intention. So that's why I think that personal branding is super important is for you to get conscious about how you want other people to talk about you when you're not in the room and then being able to give them the stories that they need to tell the right stories to their friends, which is another really important detail. Think about you want to be a guest on a lot of podcasts. You want to get your message out there. Now, every podcaster wants phenomenal guests. They want people with cool stories to share that are interesting, that are working on cool things. Well, you get to write your bio about yourself. So you're literally giving the words to the podcast host and that podcast host, for the most part, will read your introduction. They might make it sound more casual. They might make it sound like they're just coming up with it on the spot. And some podcast hosts do come up with something on the spot, and it's usually nowhere near as good as the one that you've written for them. 
But the point being that you have a lot of control over how you communicate your value to people by giving them the very words that they're going to use when they share you with their audience or give you that platform to share your message. So that's in like a podcast element. But what about in personal relationships? Well, that's what the elevator pitch is all about. So when people go, uh, what do you do? Right. That's a very common get to know you question, at least here in America. People ask, what do you do? And you can stumble through it. You're like, oh, I can do a lot of things. I do some of this. I also do some of that. I don't know. I, I just I do some things. Or you can say, oh, I'm a multiple business owner and I help businesses in this way. But that communicates a lot that you actually have viable, profitable businesses. You've got more than one of them where most people never start a single business. The fact that you started several businesses says a lot. So when people talk about meeting you, they're like, I met this guy that owns multiple businesses and he does this. They're going to use the words that you used to explain who you are because you're handing them the story for them to share with their friends. And you're already doing this. You're probably just not doing it all that great because if you haven't thought about it, what are the chances that that's the best way that you could be presenting yourself to the world? So that's why I say that personal branding is super important, whether you're an employee and you want to get a raise or you're an entrepreneur and you want to raise funding or you want to be a public figure, you want to be a YouTuber, you want to be a podcaster and you want to make big things happen. Taking ownership and control and directing the conversation that other people have about you is really important. And that's why to me, again, it's more about the experiential design and doing that with intention and then giving people the scripts that you want them to use because it's human nature to go with the easiest thing possible. So why don't I talk about you the way that you talked about yourself to me when I'm talking to my friends? Very easy. I don't want to work that hard. I, I'm going to use what you told me so that I can pass that along. And there's all kinds of places where this can apply in implications and in second, third order consequences. But really, I, I just wanted to make this video to help you think bigger beyond that branding is not just graphic design of fonts and colors or a website. It's more fundamental. What stories do you want people to tell when they talk about you while you're not in the room? You can take ownership of that. You can hand them the right things by coming up with what's best for you, what's honest and alignment with that, and then being able to be judicious about what elements of your life you're public about. And that kind of public facing communication grows out of what's your brand. You have to architect and author that yourself or other people are going to do do that for you and they're not going to be as kind and generous about helping your vision so much as they're going to tell your story in a way that serves their vision more than yours. So either brand yourself or somebody else is going to do it for you for their benefit. So that's why I think if you only understand personal branding as commodifying your life, you're really missing out on one of the most valuable parts of being a person, which is being able to tell your own story in the way that you want to in your work, in your relationships, when you're meeting people at Starbucks. So you're already doing it. Just take ownership and do it properly this time. So that's it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up in the comments. If you got this far, amazing. Glad to still see you. I'd really appreciate it. If you liked the video, that'll help tell the platform that, hey, other people might want to see this as well. And if you want to see what else I talk about, I strongly suggest that you subscribe to the channel for future videos. Or if you want to keep digging in, check out this video next. And as always, remember, if you can change your mind, you can change your life.